Let's Science is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. We live in a universe of scientific wonders. Every day, scientists are inching towards breakthroughs which can change our lives. We're playing our small part in sharing these wonders with you. That's why today is a fine day for science. So let's science. A couple of episodes ago, I don't know if it was our last one or two episodes before that. I think it's two Ooh. episodes ago, something like yeah. that. Yeah. We found that really interesting and creepy story about zombie spiders but they're not the only. They're not the only oh, zombies. Yeah, love yeah. This subject. They're not the only oh, zombies no. that exist, though, are they? Oh, so, no. Caroline, oh, tell no. us about oh, no. zombie ants. So, yes, like you're saying, I have a moldy zombies update. So, <laughs> 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 um, it was in fact 100 episode 136 of the Catholics of Oz that I spoke oh, okay. about cool. a mold called Jubelua atemberi, found in the caves of Northern Ireland that had the ability to mind control a species of all-weaving spider. It would coax the spider out to go out into the open of the caves rather than staying in the dark corners and then the mold would kill the spider, grow and feed on it and develop its spores and then spread the spores into the caves so the cycle could happen again to some other unwilling spiders. So this is the update. We have found recently that there's a species of mold that does this kind of thing here in Australia. Of course there just is. Just to add to the list of dangerous species of creatures <laughs> that live in this country. In the yep. Northern Territory, there exists, hold on to your hats, zombie ants. Mm, okay. I love that so, there's a mold in this. Oh, what is it? A mold, a fungus? What is it? Sorry, Caroline. Is it, yes, yeah, it's a, a mold. A mold or a bacteria, whatever it is. Yep, yep. 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 But I love no, that there's one that, say, yep. <laughs> I love this one that can proudly say, I come from the land down under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Play the theme. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's all I wanted to say. That's it. That, yep. Very good. Oh, yeah. In my head. That's a good song, too. Yeah, um, there you go. So that should be it our is, national actually, anthem, yeah, just putting it out there. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, Oh, da, 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 da. I digress. I digress. No, no, Let's get back stop that. Yeah, yeah, okay, no. <laughs> so, yeah, so in the Northern Territory, there exists these zombie ants. These ants have been taken over by a yet to be properly identified species of mold. This species of ants has been found Ooh, to be okay. infected, and its name is Polyarchus senilis. They were found by Dr. Francois Brassard who is a myomycologist that is an entomologist who studies ants. He's also a postdoc with the University of Western Australia. And he was conducting a bush blitz on the Jawayan country in the Northern Territory, which is a project that catalogues Australia's biodiversity. And he noticed this strange phenomenon. He at first found a colony of thriving spiny savanna ants, but then there were, in his words, some creepy-looking dead ants around it clamped to grass stalks. He realised then that the ants were infected by a parasitic fungus. So like the cave spiders in Northern Ireland, these ants were infected with a fungus that manipulated to climb the vegetation, then attach or clamp themselves to it, then the fungus would consume the ant from the inside and grow its fruiting body so that spores can develop to be spread in the area. Now, being high up in the grass stalks means that the spores can be better spread around the other ants that live in the area. So then the cycle starts again as the ants become infected with the fungus and go through the same process. Smart mold. Now, I'm not sure how many facial expressions it is. I just made yeah. while you read that. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot. I can see it. Uh, it was <laughs> so now as a bit of a continuation on to this story the phenomenon has possible implications for biodiversity in the area and also link a link with first nations people so Cherie Bruce is an Arente and Yolnu woman in the peer and a PhD scholar of the University of Queensland and she's a mycologist which she is researching the value of fungi for first nations people 
Fungi are an important part of our ecosystem. Even though we don't see them all the time, or maybe we see fungi and we don't give them a second thought, I can't say that about me because I love to investigate and photograph yeah, yeah, right, any yeah. interesting fungi I see out in nature. We've I have many photos. photos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> now, Cherie Bruce says that 99% of plants have mycorrhiza, which is actually a symbiotic relationship between the plant and the fungi. So fungi actually assist plants by extending their ability to take up water and nutrients such as phosphorus, which is important to plant health and may also help by providing protection from pathogens. They create a mycelial network around the root of plants. And finally, I get to say that in the context of science and not of Star Trek. Star Trek. (laughs) (laughs) This is a legit mycelial network, okay? So the, it, they spread their mycelium around the roots of the plant and in the soil and grow with the plants and help the plant. So the parasitic fungus is suspected to be from the Ophiocoryceps genus, which is already known to alter ant behavior. And apparently it is quite rare. It has been documented in other tropical regions, but no previous confirmation of the fungus infecting any species has been recorded in Northern Territory. So Cherie Bruce plans to sequence this DNA of the fungus and find out if it is indeed a new species of fungus. Now, there's also a connection to First Nations knowledge here. So she also plans to share the sample with other First Nations people to see if perhaps they've observed it before. Because if it has, it's likely been around for thousands of years and the knowledge already exists. Thousands Mm. of years. Mm. So the discovery Mm -hmm. of the ants through this bush blitz and the sharing of the discovery with First Nations peoples highlights the importance of the collaboration between Western science and the traditional knowledge of the First Nations people. Mm. Cherie Bruce said that this is the right way science should be done. And it's true. There's often long-held knowledge of native populations that is not known by Western science, especially here in Australia. We know that there are traditions and knowledge about land, astronomy, animal, water, plants that would be so useful if there was only more collaboration with science. So if the knowledge is already there amongst the people who've inhabited this land for over 65,000 years, then why not access it? Just a little while, uh, That's it. It's just a bit of a (laughs) while. They have this knowledge. They have so much knowledge. And our First Nations people are so precious. Like this knowledge has been locked in their culture, but too often overlooked. So I I think we did an episode on First Nations astronomy at one point. We we talked about that. Yeah, some interesting discoveries. Yeah, that's that's right. right. And it can be applied to this kind of thing as well. So I, for Mm. one, am so pleased that zombie ants were able to bring two cultures together, even if it's in a small way. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it would be nice if they were brought together by something other than a mind-controlling fungus. But anyway, we'll take it. <laughs> true. You never yeah, know yeah. where you're going to find these things. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is true. So these, yeah. this fungus and the and the spiders, that are two different ones or are they similar but slightly different? What's so the they relationship? Need to, they do the same thing, but they yep. do need to actually find out the exact species because they're not 100% sure what it is. They suspect mm. it could be similar to it, but yeah, they being on different lands, it's probably going to be slightly different, but do the same thing. Yeah. Do the same thing. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. And may yeah. this be the last mind control fungus that we ever find. I'm, I'm not yeah. surprised that it wasn't. Yeah. Lindsay, I have a funny feeling that oh, yeah, they're out there. Probably more they're, than we know. You know I tell you, you go to part, uh, just go, let's try to all the on the major continents. See, obviously, with Asia, mm-hmm. we go go yeah. to Europe. We've done Europe. You know, yeah, Africa and yeah, it's be, be, yeah. There, there has to be I'm sure there's something, there's yes. something out there yeah. in America. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter, it was north, south, central. It well, somebody's got to fill that yeah. niche yeah. environment. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised right. there's something similar everywhere. Yeah. In that case, may they stay in can, the can you imagine if they did. Yeah, I was gonna say may yeah. they stay in the cold, dark caves and ant holes <laughs> and oh. in the grass. Just in, <laughs> Oh, yeah, come on, it, 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 let's bring some zombie, yeah. zombie topic yeah. with, with our science and explore what's going on with these. With these yeah. 30 Amazing. years we'll do a lot of science about human controlling fungus or something. Or, yeah. AI robot, oh. I reckon, but anyway. No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, going to stop that, <laughs> yes. don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're counting on him. Yeah, that's it, yep. Let's Science is brought to you by StarQuest Media. 
and is a fortnightly podcast that brings you the scientific wonders of our universe from a distinctly Catholic point of view. For more from Caroline, Lindsay, and friends, listen to the StarQuest show, Catholics of Oz. Find links from today's show at sqpn.com slash science and find the Catholics of Oz at sqpn.com slash Oz. Be sure to follow the show in Apple Podcasts, Google Play, wherever you can find podcasts, or on the SQPN YouTube channel. The generous donations of our patrons at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue Let Science and all the shows at StarQuest, which makes our nonprofit mission possible. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. Join us next time for more scientific wonders, and thank you for listening to Let Science on StarQuest. Here's another show on the StarQuest network you're sure to enjoy, The Secrets of Middle Earth. Find it wherever you can find podcasts or at sqpn.com slash Middle Earth.